We're going to talk to um, Gio, who is calling in from Arizona first here. Gio, you're on Truth Wanted. What's going on? Yeah, uh, you guys hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you just fine. What's up, Gio? All right, great. Uh, I spoke with the call screener, and this is uh, something that occurred in a home uh, that I used to live in. Uh, I don't live there any longer, but it was a it was a handprint that would move around the home, but it would burn into the floor. A handprint that it, moved around the floor that was burned into the floor. It moved around the home into different places. Oh, and it would burn! It would. It was a handprint that would be looked as though it was burned into the floor. Now I've touched it myself, and it was actually a burnt handprint which shaped like a hand with five fingers you could see it it was small a small hand but it was a handprint but yeah was your was this house built on ancient native american burial grounds like what 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 do you think is the best explanation for this i i have no idea i think someone's mm. playing games mm. what it is. i think someone and the home is playing games but the only the only odd thing about it is that it moves and print the burned in print moves and the where it was is no sign of a burn and when it wherever the print is it's always hidden so uh, it, i've seen it three times in the 20 years that i was in this home and the first time i saw it it was underneath a rug that was the room was being painted, so we had to move everything out, all the furniture out, and we only saw the handprint once we removed the rug. It was an area rug underneath the dining table. So huh. when we moved the rug away, we could see the handprint there, and we're like, what's this? And we go, and well, there's a burnt handprint here. Well, okay. That's really bizarre. Then. Wow. But okay, do you, have, you, you don't have any pictures of this, do you? I didn't. I didn't take any. It wasn't my home. Oh, uh, okay. It was somebody else's home. I. I don't know if they took pictures of it or not. Well, uh, so it's a, so we, you are living we, at this house. Yeah, I lived there for nearly ten years, and I was oh, you did live with them before. I, they oh, were okay. friends, childhood friends of mine. So I've been in the house as a child, and I lived in the house as an adult. Hey, Gio, I'm curious. Were you living in the house at the time when the handprint was moving? I saw the handprint once when I was a, when I was a kid because my friend lived in the home and we, I would go and we would go back and forth to each, each other's home to hang out. And that's when, when they were moving all the furniture, I was there and I saw the handprint on the floor as a child. That was the first time I had seen it. Now, I had seen it two other times, once under a bed and another time underneath, uh, uh, it was a planter. It was underneath a large planter that was on the porch. How, how long after the first time? It was years, years after. Were it you was, an adult was, for any of these times? Afterwards. Excuse me? Have you been, were you an adult at any time when you saw this, or, or was this when I, you were a kid? I was an adult. Yeah, I was an adult when I, the two other times I saw it. Okay. I saw it three times total. I was t I was an adult twice when I saw it. And the thing is, it moves and it hides. So we don't know where it is. Like, we're not searching the home looking for it because it seems kind of pointless because we don't know where to look and we're not we're just not hmm. going to turn the house over to look for this thing so but you're living in this house here. now no i'm living this was in new york the home is was was is now is is over a hundred years old it's an old victorian home with mm -hmm. multiple stories and it's an old home that it's now mm -hmm. in a pres preserved neighborhood where they can't even touch the houses because of the nature of the uh, where it is and it's it's just an odd thing that happened that i can't explain and uh to this day i have no explanation for it and i've never told this to anyone else uh 
at all. That's that's pretty it's bizarre. I, I've you ever, know, yeah, like it, it's hard to say yeah. without us being there exactly what it could be. You know, we can only speculate. I I would say that this is something that you know, if if the person whoever is keeping that house or whatever, I mean, it, it what I would do if I was experiencing this and I didn't know what was going on, I would just set up a, a video camera at the one spot when you find the handprint and just keep it there and just keep it going like 24 seven and see if that thing disappears or if it goes somewhere in the house or maybe have some security cameras. Um, because I, I, I Right. You know, if we're if what you're seeing is truly a handprint and not some kind of pareidolia or, you know, some other experience, then my only guest guest as, you know, a skeptic would be able to say, well, that has to be a human doing that. Um, because, I mean, if it's a ghost, I don't know what the ghost is trying to prove <laughs> by putting handprints all over the place, you know. Um, yeah, because yeah, I, I, I don't. I, I'm not, I don't. Well, yeah, I don't believe in that kind of stuff. Yeah. I'm not one to. To yeah, those, those a lot of times, so. a, a lot of times with with issues like these, uh, Geo people. W one of the problems is we don't really see people testing these experiences. You know, it, it, they seem to be prevented from conducting some sort of experiment to where they could find out what this is. You know, um, if if I noticed some sort of strange burnt in handprint one day after removing a rug and I'd never seen it there before. That would be an oddity, but it would certainly be something that I would go back to maybe uh, the next day or two weeks later, um, so that you could monitor the monitor the frequency at which it was moving. You know, and if it was just something like if you come back ten years later and you don't notice it at that point, there could have been a million things that happened to it. But you know, how often would it move? This it sounds like the type of thing that you weren't really able to test because you didn't have uh, consistent access to this house and so we're kind of just left to our imagination you know and i think that that's the case with a lot of well, yeah. paranormal experiences where the people they're not really in a position or it doesn't occur to, the, to them to set up some sort of test or experiment to monitor uh this strange activity mm. right well this this all occurred uh only the third time cameras were available commercially for people to videotape. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we were just using normal cameras that put you put film in, like you know, thirty-five millimeter cameras, because we didn't have digital cameras back then. Yeah, so I don't live there any longer, and I'm not. I'm not. I'm not in contact with those people, so I don't know what they did about it. If they did anything, but I know we didn't. I didn't investigate it, and I had. We really didn't have any any way of investigating it because. Once we saw the handprint and we put it everything back, it disappeared, and and yeah. we couldn't find it until years later when we invest when things like they had to move furniture around the house. It moved the handprint moved upstairs to the second floor under a bed, which no one. How would you know that it was there? We wouldn't know. So you're and talking about so different. When you say it's, huh? is it always on a surface? Is it the same material surface where this is like burned in? Is it different yeah, it material? Floor, yeah, yeah. It was always burned into the floor, which was the, the all, all the floors are wood, wood floors, okay. oak floors. So what what's what was burned? And it was. Go ahead. Keep going. So the last time I saw it, uh, this it was still many years ago. It was outside on the porch under hmm. a planter that was a huge planter it had to weigh at least 300 pounds full of dirt that housed a tree and it took three people to move the planter away and the handprint was underneath the planter and we were moving the planter to repair the porch to, to repair the uh the oak planks that were on the porch because they were basically falling apart and that's how we discovered that it was there Huh. So, who was it besides who was it besides you that was there? You said we. It was me. It was me. I was there. There was another friend of ours who was there, and it was the homeowner's son who's our friend who was there. So there were three people who actually saw it. And the homeowner herself, the woman who owned the home, saw it as well. Because it was uncovered because it was uncovered the whole time we were working on the porch. Right. And these other people that were with you, they were aware of this handprint issue 
existing before yeah like you um is it possible that, that uh, well, it could have been a fabrication the other friend it was the first time the other friend had seen the handprint but the son of the homeowner had seen the hand prints before before i have seen them he said he'd seen them in other places around the house mm -hmm. so you know mm -hmm. i just have to take it at face value so but it's yeah. something i've never been able to explain or uh, that no one has ever been ever able to explain in any rational way so i don't know what it is or what it was i mean i could have been hallucinating but i don't know it's kind of hard to does does that. the fact that you're not able to does the fact that you're not able to explain it disturb you? Well, I'm not really disturbed. I'm more or less kind of like perplexed in in a way. I'm not because yeah. I don't believe in. I I think there's there's a natural explanation for that. Whatever that is, I don't know what it is, but I know that there must be or has to be some natural explanation for that. Yeah, I but get that. You, I I feel like a lot of people have stories like this where it's like right. yeah I, I don't believe in any paranormal or extra whatever but like you know yeah. i just don't know what the best explanation is and and i i'm trying to think if i have any stories like that i must have oh, like I one or do. two yeah, yeah. I, it's it's like it's frustrating because it's like well i can't go back in time and recreate those exact conditions and examine them in the way that i would like to now and it's like i yeah i i, I feel you i wish i could help you but it, it, we're even more limited here on a call-in show than, than yeah. you would in your own head. So I, I don't know, man. I, I wish hate, I could give you more. <laughs> we hate unsolved mysteries. You yeah. Know? It's just, it sucks having yeah, a I, mystery that's unsolved too. for us. It's mm. just a lingering thing that I've never really talked about with anybody. And, and I actually only remembered about it due to a, a live stream that I was watching a, a few days ago during, you know, during the Halloween well, I'll say this, you know, yeah. chat, if you guys have any um, potential explanations, you know, ask them or, or, or put them out there in the chat or, or comments. If you're watching the clip of this on YouTube or, or the episode or on Spotify, iTunes, you know, wherever else you might get podcasts is where the show is available. I would say, see if we can figure this one out for Geo. Um, I mean, I don't think we can, <laughs> but like, I don't know. I don't have any better explanations other than it has to be either misremembering yeah. some sort of details or just yeah just someone pulling a Maybe. some sort of weird prank or just like a, a handprint was left on accident and somebody forgot about it you know like i, it, it, I it's just <laughs> has to be something right it's a mystery i don't know yeah I, yeah yeah well geo thanks for calling sorry we couldn't do it much more for you but um hope uh i hope you find peace with it man because <laughs> I, I i i just don't know what to do right yeah really weird stuff I don't know. You had any thoughts about that, Bryce? Yeah, just we, you know, human beings need closure, you know, and, and it's it's hard to it's hard to not think about things that we don't understand if we don't have an explanation for it. And so we will just, you know, we rack our brains trying to figure out what could this have been. And a lot of people end up um, crafting an explanation that seems reasonable to them but not something that's based on anything they've tested they have no ability to test it they just need an answer you know and i think this is how frankly i think this is how a lot of religions <laughs> came about in the first place yeah um, but, yeah like yeah. when left with our own devices right we can either go to or else we can say well i just don't know or it must be x mm -hmm. you know like it has to be this other thing like it has to be a ghost it has to be the holy spirit it has to be something that we've never Aliens. demonstrably proved was true yeah in the first place yeah. um so i saw yeah. a ufo when i was uh maybe about 15 years old and um i was actually i there was a witness it was someone else with me at the time we both saw this thing in the sky no explanation for it, it was clearly not an airplane clearly not a helicopter not making any noise it was night, but it, it was emanating light. And so, mm -hmm. but in an it, unusual pattern moved in an unusual way and then disappeared. And to this day, we have no explanation for what and, that was. And you know, Bryce, some people might say, well, you know, so many people have these experiences where they can't explain. That must be enough evidence for something. And and to me, I say, I think people are just really bad at identifying stuff in poor light conditions. <laughs> like, I don't think yeah, that's, it, you know. it could be that. I mean, I'm satisfied yeah. with simply saying, it was a UFO, 
because yeah. it was unidentified, right? It was right. an unidentified flying object. There was definitely something there, mm-hmm. but I have no idea what it was. I don't know if it was just a light. I don't know if it was a ship. I don't know if it was a vehicle. I don't know if it was a reflection. I have no yeah. idea. And I have no ability to investigate that. And so I can't reach any conclusion about what it is. And Yeah. You know, yeah. You just got to um, just got to uh, deal with the cards that you're dealt with. Right. Yeah. I'm um, not convinced that it's aliens, though. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I, I wouldn't be either. Um, but let's go ahead and go to our next caller here. We have uh, Carpe Diem calling in from Colorado here. Oh, I'm sorry. I need to say something first before we get to this call because I uh, forgot to do it while we, uh, we went to our first call. It's our patron of the week, of course. Um, every single week we have a special patron that we like to shout out um, that donates to the show. It's patreon.com slash truth wanted to do that. Um, and this week's patron of the week is, and I hope I'm going to be saying this right. Uh, Babo Ianu Adi is, I think is how you say that. So thank you for donating. And again, if you'd like to donate to the show, all of it goes to making this show better. I don't receive personally any of it. It goes to, um, making, uh, uh, uh getting the equipment better and, um, doing, uh, stuff for the show in the background. Uh, it, it goes through all the AC activities. So, uh, please consider donating if you like this show. So thank you guys for doing that. 